Hello there, you sweet ladybugs. I'm going to be sending you a video each day, something particularly for women, to minister to you, just something short, but something that you can feed on. I'm going to be calling it uh, a fresh cup of water. And I start with lesson one today, and that is, why bother to pray? Through the years, many people have asked me, well, if God knows everything, why should we bother to pray? That's what I want to talk to you briefly about today. God is sovereign. And yes, indeed, He can do anything, and He knows everything. But one of the reasons to pray is that our Supreme Ruler, the ultimate power over all, told us to. It's a command, and if we truly do love Him, we obey His commands. That's found in 1 John 2 and 3. We know that we have come to know Him if we obey His commands. There was a quote from Mother Teresa that I really liked. It said, the secret of prayer is very simple. Pray. Hmm. Through prayer, one becomes one in love with God, the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Praying to Him is loving Him. I have found that to be so very true. If you don't talk to God on a regular basis, you can't really be loving Him. So back to our focus, why bother to pray? The second reason to pray is that Jesus prayed. Some say the main reason that we're to pray is so that God can change us, and that's so very true. But there are other reasons for us to pray as well. Jesus was not being made holy by his prayers. He was communing with the Father. I have to do this because we also are communing with the Father. Communion means sharing one's deep thoughts and feelings. Jesus was asking for things. He was thanking God. In the Garden of Gethsemane, He was pouring out His hurting heart to the Father. Then He was yielding. He was giving up His own will. And He was accepting God's plan for Him and for humanity. There is a poem that has meant a great deal to me through the years, written by a famous missionary, Amy Carmichael. And she entitled it to Find Peace. And it's my prayer that it helps you as much as it helps me. He said, I will forget the dying faces, the empty places, they shall be filled again. O oh, voices moaning deep within me, cease. But vain the word, vain, vain. Not in forgetting lieth peace. And I add, we can't just say, oh, I'm just going to forget about this and go on. No, because it's still in there, still in your heart, and it's not going to bring you peace to forget, because you're not really going to forget. On with the poem. He said, I will crowd action upon action. The strife of factions shall stir me and sustain. O oh, tears that drive, drown the fire of manhood cease. But vain the word, vain, vain, not in endeavor lieth peace. In other words, we can't just get so busy, busy and run, run and, and then fall in the bed at night exhausted as if that's going to bring us peace. It's not going to bring us peace. That's not the answer. He said, I will withdraw me and be quiet. Why meddle in life's riot? Shut be my door of pain. Desire thou dost befool me. Thou shalt cease. But vain the word, vain, vain. Not in aloofness lies peace. That means I'll just, I don't care. I don't really care about any of it. No, that's not going to bring peace. He said, I will submit. I am defeated. God hath depleted my life of its rich gain. O oh, futile murmurings, why will thou not cease? But vain the word, vain, vain, not in submission lieth peace. All right, God, I'll just give up, whatever. 
That's not going to bring you peace. But then he said, I will accept the breaking sorrow, which God tomorrow will to his son explain. Then did the turmoil deep within him cease. Not vain the word, not vain, for in acceptance lieth peace. Now you're not going to get upset. You're not going to say, okay, God, I accept what's happening to me or what you're allowing to come my way. You're going to have to pray, help me to accept. Help me to accept that you've got a plan for me, that you love me, you're working the best in me, and accept because if you just fight, 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 you're never going to have peace. For in acceptance lieth peace. Matthew 26 and 39 says, Going a little further, he, being Jesus, fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Mother Teresa also said the essential thing is not what we say in prayer, but what God says to us through His Word and through the Holy Spirit. Do you know that prayer can be a two-way conversation? If you take the time to read His Word, you pray, ask Him, ask Him to talk to you. You read His Word. When you see something stand out, that's Him talking to you. And, and you thank Him and you talk with Him about that. Then you read some more. I mean, it's, it's two-way wonderful communion between you and the Father. It's not just a church thing. Far, far more than just a church thing. Back to my original, why bother to pray? The third reason is this. God has set it up that people are to pray first and then He moves according, accordingly. He moves according to faith moves according to what his perfect plan is and gives the answer. Things simply just will not happen until we pray. That's how God has set it up. You know, God can do anything and everything he wants, but he wants us to ask and believe and to see our prayers come to fruition, to see the miracles happen. If we don't pray and ask, how can we see him move? How would we really be able to glorify Him and then witness about Him if we don't see anything? And He's not going to do it until we ask. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Did you notice the words, earnestly seek Him? Prayer is not just about asking Him for something you want. Seeking Him is asking to get to know Him more. Reading His Word. When you're reading the Word, you're looking up to see who is He. I always pray, Lord, what makes you happy? What hurts you, Lord? What can I do that will bless you? I want to know Him. It's like a treasure hunt. Every time I open the Bible, every time you open the Bible, it's like a treasure hunt of finding God. And the more you know Him, the closer you're going to be drawn to Him and the closer your relationship will be. If we don't pray, you know, we don't have any spiritual power. Time with God, really with God, gives us power to be godly, gives us the ability to know Him and be close to Him. Finally, the pattern all over the Bible is for us to work and to pray. We do what we can while asking and depending on God to do what we cannot do. Then watch for the answers. He is going to send them. And don't forget to thank Him. The, the minute you've asked Him for something or to do something, then thank Him immediately right then. Thank you, Lord, because I know you're going to do it. You are faithful, you are mighty, and I know you're going to do it. And then when He does answer the prayer, sometimes people just go on with their business 
in life, but stop and praise Him. Thank Him deeply and then tell everybody else about it. That's how you witness. In closing, I am going to, I'm going to do something odd in that I'm going to read a prayer from Elizabeth Elliot. I'm doing it because this is a prayer that she wrote, that she meant, and when I read it, I thought, I mean that from my heart too. I can say that truly to the Lord. So I share it with you in closing this day. Loving Lord and Heavenly Father, I offer up today all that I am, all that I have, all that I do, all that I suffer, to be yours today and yours forever. Teach me to respond with honest praise, simple trust, and instant obedience. That's where I need help, instant obedience. That my life may be truly a living sacrifice. I pray it all in the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, my Master, my all. Amen. Tomorrow I will be sharing again a refreshing cup of water. May it minister to you and draw you closer to the Lord. I love you all. Bye.